Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Bitsat Practice, we're going to be looking at some questions of physics which were asked in previous editions of Bitsat. Today, we're dealing with units and measurements. Now, this is a chapter of physics that's pretty important because it is the foundation for the chapters that you study ahead for Bitsat. So in this particular chapter, we're looking at units and how to measure quantities. So let's begin with a question from 2018. If C is the velocity of light, G the acceleration due to gravity, and P is the atmospheric pressure, now these are considered as the fundamental quantities in the MKS system, then the dimensions of length will be same as that of C by G, C by P, P, C, G, and C squared by G. So, we have three quantities here, and we need to find the dimensions of a fourth quantity. So, it's a good idea to start by looking at the dimensions of C, G, and P. So, C is velocity of light, and velocity's dimensions are LT raised to minus 1. And for acceleration, the dimensions are LT raised to minus 2. And for atmospheric pressure, the dimensions are M, L raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So these are the three quantities, the fundamental quantities in the MKS system. Now the fourth quantity here is length and the dimension of length is just L. So what we essentially need to find out is a combination of the two quantities which will give us just L as the final product, the final answer. <laughs> so let's look at C by G, that's option A. So basically here we have to divide LT raised to minus 1 with LT raised to minus 2. So the length gets cancelled, T raised to minus 2 goes to the top, that becomes T squared. So T squared times T raised to minus 1 gives you just time. So C by G gives us dimensions for time. That means option A is incorrect. What about option B? C divided by P. That means we have to divide LT raised to minus 1 with ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So mass is in the denominator, so that's M raised to minus 1. And L raised to minus 1 goes to the numerator, so that means L. So L times L is L squared. And then T raised to minus 1 in the denominator, we have T raised to minus 2, so the resultant will be just T. Now, let's look at option C. Option C was P, C, and G. So as you can see, this is not equal to length. So that means option B is also incorrect. Now let's look at option C, P, C, G. So that means multiplying all the three quantities together. So what you get is LT raised to minus one times LT raised to minus two times M L raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So what we have is M and then L left because 1 L cancels out L raised to minus 1. And then you have T raised to minus 2, T raised to minus, minus 2. So that's minus 4, and then multiply that, you'll get minus 5. So again, this is not equal to length, so that, so that means option C is incorrect. So we now know that the final answer is option D, C squared by G. But then let's prove it by dividing it. So C squared is L squared times T raised to minus 2 divided by G, which is LT raised to minus 2. So T raised to minus 2 gets cancelled. L squared divided by L gives you just length. 
So that's why option D is the correct answer. Now, remember while we were doing the first option, we would have got the idea of using option D right away by you know, checking out that LT raised to minus one is divided with LT raised to minus two. So if we were to square the numerator, we could eliminate T raised to minus two and then the L would remain. So that's the basic idea behind option D being the correct answer. And that's why D is correct. Now, if you're watching our video, I recommend that we watch our videos completely because what we're essentially doing here is checking out each option and then finding out what is wrong with it until we get the correct answer. So therefore, effectively, when you're viewing one of our questions, you're basically getting an idea of how to solve up to five or more questions. So therefore, watching the complete video of three questions here would give you an excess of 15 questions being discussed. So, we know that option D is the correct answer for this question asked in 2018. Let's move on to another question. This one was asked in 2017. In the formula x equals 3yz squared, x and z have dimensions of capacitance and magnetic induction, respectively. The dimensions of y in the MKSA system are we have one of the four options and we need to find out which of these is correct. So for this particular question, let's look at the formula first. X equals 3yz squared. And our target is to find the dimensions of y. So that means we will have to write the equation in terms of y. So y equals x divided by 3z squared. So this is the equation as itself. So from this particular equation, we can find out the dimensions of y. The dimensions of y is equal to the dimensions of x divided by the square of the dimensions of z. So that's how you can find the dimensions of y. Now, how do we know the dimensions of x and z? That is given in the question. X has the dimensions of capacitance and z has the dimensions of magnetic induction. So dimensions of x is equal to the dimensions of capacitance and dimensions of capacitance are m raised to minus 1, l raised to minus 2, t raised to 4, a squared. So this is the dimension of x. Let's look at the dimensions of z. The dimensions of z are the dimensions of magnetic induction. So that means we will need to write down the dimensions of magnetic induction, which is m l raised to 0, t raised to minus 2, a raised to minus 1. So now that we know the dimensions of x and z, Let's apply the, those values to the equation dimensions of y equals dimensions of x divided by dimensions of z squared. So let's write the equation again and then plug in the values. So let's look at dimensions of x. Those are m raised to minus 1, l raised to minus 2, t raised to 4, a squared. And then we have m l raised to 0, t raised to minus 2, a raised to minus 1. Now this denominator is squared completely. And now we will start simplifying it. So what we're getting is the numerator stays the, sta stays the same, m raised to minus 1, l raised to minus 2, t raised to 4, a squared. and the denominator, we will now square each of the dimensions. So we will get m squared, l raised to 0, t raised to minus 4, and a raised to minus 2. The reason why l still has the dime, l is still raised to 0 is because 0 times 2 gives you 0, so l still, there is no dimensions of length here. So now 
what do we have? We have t raised to four. <laughs> so what are we going? We are going to do this particular step. We're going to take each dimension and then solve the exponents. So minus one is in the numerator, and since two is in the denominator, when you take that to the numerator, it becomes minus two. So we have minus one minus two. The dimensions of length stays as minus 2 because the denominator has no dimensions of length. For time, we have 4 in the, in the numerator and minus 4 in the denominator. We take minus 4 to the top, it becomes plus 4. And then for A, which stands for amperes, that's basically the unit of electric current, we have two, we had two in the numerator and minus two in the denominator. When you take that to the numerator, it becomes plus two. So then the final dimensions are m raised to minus three, l raised to minus two, t raised to eight, and a raised to four. So if you look at our options, it is clear that the correct option is option C because when you solve the when you first write the equation and write it in terms of y and then find out the dimensions of y using that equation then the final result will be equal to option C so option C is the correct option for this question which was asked in 2017 Let's look at the final question of this episode. This one's asked from 2016. The frequency of vibration of the string is given by nu equals p by 2l times f by m raised to half, where p is the number of segments in the string and l is the length. The dimensional formula for m will be one of the four options. So how do we solve this question? So we're given the equation nu equals p divided by 2l times the square root of f by m. So first we'll remove the square root by squaring both sides. So we will get nu square as equal to p by 2l, I mean p square by 4l square times f divided by m. So this square root gets cancelled and p gets squared, l gets squared, 2 becomes 4 because 2 squared is 4. Now we need to find out the dimensional formula for m so we take m to the left hand side and we write the equation in terms of m. So what we get is m equals p squared times f divided by 4l squared times nu squared where nu is the frequency. Now here p is the number of segments so that means the value of p has no dimensions so p is a dimensionless quantity we have l that has dimensions of length force is represented by f so we have dimensions of force there so to find the dimensions of m we have to take the dimension the quantities with a dimension. So in this case, the numerator has the dimensions of force and the denominator has the dimensions of length squared and also of frequency squared. So now we will find out the dimensions of m. Note that m here is not mass. This is a constant which we're going to find out it's a dimension it's, it's a constant with dimensions and we're going to find its dimensions right now so in the numerator we have the dimensions of force force is mass times acceleration and therefore m l t raised to minus 2 is are the dim, is the dimensions of force so l, l t raised to minus 2 is acceleration m stands for mass and since force is mass times acceleration this 
particular value of the numerator represents the dimensions of force. Next we have the dimensions of L squared, so for length the, the dimensions are L as itself, so L squared, and frequency is represented as 1 by time, so 1 by t squared. So what we get is ML t raised to minus 2 divided by L square times t raised to minus 2 because 1 by t is t raised to minus 1. t raised to minus 1 squared gives you t raised to minus 2. Now we have t raised to minus 2 on both, both the numerator and the denominator so we can cancel those out and <clears throat> we have m as it is and the exponents for L are 1 and then minus 2 because L square when you take it to the numerator it becomes L raised to minus 2. So the final dimensions of M is M L raised to minus 1. So there we have our final answer and if we look at our options you can see that option C is the correct answer. So in option C we have m l raised to minus 1 t raised to 0 which is just another way of representing m l raised to minus 1 because t raised to 0 means that there are no dimensions of t which is what we represent here by just writing m l raised to minus 1. So therefore option C m l raised to minus 1 t raised to 0 is the correct option for this question which was asked in 2016. Now that concludes this episode of Bitside Practice. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel which is Brain Blitz Audios. You can always share your views in the comment section down below. If you want to access more of our content on Bitside, you can hit the playlists link that's present in the description box down below and also you can press the notifications button to get our latest updates again the bell icon is present below the video so until the next webisode take care stay safe bye bye for now